be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, along with my partner and friend, Max Marciano. Max, how you doing, brother? Peace. Hey. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. How are Whoa. you? Oh, look at you. Your spotlight just came on, right? Or like, a, boom, you got really bright on the screen. How cool is that? Do you have lighting people with you today? What's going on, dude? Just, just my <laughs> lamp. <laughs> well, here we are again, episode 27. My God, who would have thought Ooh. that we would be this far down that road? I just can't wait to see what episode 30 looks like. You know what I mean? Hey. One week at wow. a time. Hey, before you know it, we'll be syndicated. <laughs> right. We're working on that here on YouTube. First of all, before we start today, I'll, I'll take this opportunity because we've started it off this way to thank everybody who has been following us here on YouTube and has subscribed to our channel. Uh, we will never be able to thank you enough and, and share with you how grateful we are that uh, for your commitment and your belief in the message that we deliver. And if this is the first time that you're watching us on YouTube, you can subscribe right here just below where we are. You go down here and click this, and you'll get a notification every time we go on or every time one of our videos drops. Plus, if you like what we're saying, give us a thumbs up. Drop your comments here in the box. We are really making a, a dedicated effort to make sure that we try to answer all the questions that people pose to us. And so... Um, Again, thank you so very, very much. So, Max, today, I think we need to talk about peroxide, developer, Ooh. processing Ooh. lotion. <laughs> what else do they call it? <laughs> Activating solution, power catalyst. Yes. I mean, oh, energize, uh, color energizer I've seen. Man, Peroxide has as many outfits as Diana Ross or Cher when they do a concert. <laughs> yes. Oh, so, correct. So we want to kind of, and, and this all happened because of a note that I got from someone uh, who was asking me, because they watched one of our programs, and they said, well, you recommend 20 volume for great coverage. and I've always been using 10 volume and I've had good success. Why would I switch to 20 volume? And so as I sat there and I thought about that, I said, maybe this is an opportunity for us to maybe look at peroxide in a different way. You know what I mean? Because I think that we are all caught up in, is it, what volume is it? What percentage is it? And sometimes we don't even understand what that means. Volume has nothing. It's not turn up the volume, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. you know or percentage. What does that mean? And so uh, what I tried to get them to do in, in a, a regular text post that I made was to think about peroxide in, in a different way. And, and, and here's how we would like you to think about it as we go through our episode today. Think of it as available oxygen. Here's why I say that, because we know that in the color process, in order to develop the hair color molecule, it requires oxidation, which requires a release of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about different strengths, of peroxide or developer or whatever you call it, it really <clears throat> is a metric for how much available oxygen there is for you to work with. So first, let's define what peroxide does. And really it does four things and we'll cover each one of them. One, it prepares. And we'll explain what that means. If you're taking notes, you might want to make a note. <laughs> Two, it delivers. Three, it develops. And four, it degrades. And so I think that that could be our outline for our program today, Max, to talk about yeah. each and every one of those. 
So, so now that I've kind of shared my story, do you want to make some comments before we start? Sure. Let's just um, let's let's take a few of those things just a, a step further. Sure. So, when we when we talk peroxide, it's usually expressed in two different ways. Typically, here in the state, it's by volume, and normally overseas they talk about percent. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about volume, what does volume really mean? When, when we're looking at a radio, right, and you look at the volume, it's something that you can crank up and something that you can crank down. It's an amount of something. So when right. we talk volume with reference to developers, it, the volume actually refers to the amount of available oxygen that can be released from that hydrogen peroxide solution. So 40 volume means 40 volumes of oxygen can be released. Five volume means five volumes of oxygen. On the other side of that, it's the, the percentage is the amount or percent of that solution that is actually hydrogen peroxide. So 20 volume is a 6% hydrogen peroxide solution. 40 volume is a 12% hydrogen peroxide solution. The other remaining percent is water, right? Yes. So, and like depending on the color line, like some have a one point five percent, one point nine percent, et cetera, et cetera. There's all kinds of different volumes in between those standard, you know, three, six, nine, and twelve. And it's really dependent on the color line. Uh, but either way, it just shows how much oxygen can be released from that particular solution. And it is that release of oxygen that's needed to initiate oxidation because oxidation is actually what that means is it's the addition of oxygen to the chemical process that creates something different in the end right right without without that addition of oxygen to those dyes they will not develop on their own exactly i mean it, it accelerates the oxidation of the dyes. Now, naturally, if I were to take a tube of hair color and just squeeze it out onto a towel, over a period of time, the mixture would turn color. But that's a very slow period of time because sure. in our environment, the oxygen ratio in our environment, most all of us, wherever you live you're only breathing about 20 percent oxygen that's right. all you that's all there is and that we breathe and what keeps us alive so right. uh, let's let's start off and let's talk about one and a half percent developer or five volume if you will so will one and a half percent or five volume develop a dye intermediate the answer is absolutely But here's what you need to know. That release of oxygen in a color process is created because I've mixed an acid and an alkali together. And as we mix them together, the acid starts to break down. So as the acid is breaking down, the release of oxygen is one of the things that occur. If I mix a color and a a, a, acid and an alkali, this is hair color, together, the hair color has some degree of alkalinity based upon the level or the hair color type. So let's imagine that I mix a 1.5% developer with a level 5 hair color. That means that that level five hair color does not have a large amount of alkalinity because it's a medium range color. Mm -hmm. So that means that even though I'm using one and a half percent, 
it will not be able to release all of the oxygen that it has because the color will not allow it to happen because the color, the alkaline source, determines how much oxygen the acid source can release. <clears throat> Max, do, you, do I need clarity on that or? No, I, I believe that was very succinct, Dennis. You know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and everybody, just just remember, all developers are acid. Yes. All hair color, even if it's called an acid hair color, is alkaline in the tube or bottle. Right. It's the interaction of these two things that create the release of oxygen from that solution and that is where the magic happens exactly you know, uh, and just to uh, just to talk about like the the natural oxidation that occurs from exposure to air we we've all seen it where especially like with liquid color you know if maybe the cap's not screwed on too tight or you you've used quarter or half or three quarters of a bottle at, of a shade and you know let's say it sits for six months you know and you dump it out into your bowl a lot of times it's it's already right. you know naturally oxidized but that really takes place over a, an extended period of time whereas right. developer because of that you know you have the alkaline or the alkali rather and the acid in the developer man, it's like turbocharged, no matter yeah. what the volume. The, all the volume is, and I know I might be repeating myself, all the volume it is, is the amount of oxygen that can be released from the solution right. based on how much alkalinity is in there. And, you know, like we see a lot of crazy stuff on social media where people are taking like let's say like a demi permanent hair color that's meant to work with a five volume and mixing it with a higher volume and saying you know they're getting more tonal deposit i mean there's like a myriad of assumptions know, <laughs> responses that happen yeah. and yeah. listen you guys if you're doing it and it's working for you, we're not here to tell you you're wrong. Right. But we do want to give you data and information backed by science. And one exactly. of the best rules of thumb that you can essentially put into your little hip pocket of information is the higher the volume, the less deposit you're going to get in your end result. Or as they say, the more lift in a formula, the less deposit. And, you know, not to skip ahead, but we did say when we were listing the four things that peroxide does, there is that very final one, which is yes. the grade. Yeah. yeah. And take it away, so Dennis. Uh, <laughs> you that's great. No, no, you did it the right way. You actually, your hand was pointed towards me. You were synced really good. There you go. <laughs> so, so let's go back to the five volume for just a moment. A five volume mixed with a level five. Now in hair color, there's something else that is called maximum dye development. That means that there is a point in time in the color process when all the dye intermediates are developed to its fullest deposit. If I have only one and a half percent oxygen and it's already going to shut down because the hair color is not, does not have an, enough alkalinity in it, do you think I'm going to achieve maximum dye deposit? And the answer of course is no. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that I've developed some of the color, but it's not developed to maximum dye development. So what does that do to the longevity of the color? It probably shortens the longevity of the color. Uh, 
the, we have we have thought about that. And also remember peroxide or yeah, peroxide, one of the things that it does is it prepares by breaking down the structures of the hair, the internal structure that goes in, it breaks down the melanin into smaller pieces. So you create more light reflection and light absorption. The stronger the volume or percentage of developer you use, the more breakdown of the structure you will have. So when I use five or 10 volume, I don't break the structure down as much as I would if I was using a 6% or 20 volume. And so as a result of that is where we've come up with one of these urban beliefs that 10 volume gives you more deposit than 20 volume. It doesn't. All that it does is it breaks down less pigment or melanin in the hair, which means that the hair is not contributing as much warmth, which makes it read to us visually as though we got more deposit out of our 10 volume than we did out of any of the higher volumes. So that lower volume developer does not have enough available oxygen to give you maximum dye development. Will it develop a color? Yes. But the issue at that point is, <clears throat> what about the longevity of the color? That is why I and everyone who thinks the way we do <laughs> recommend 20 volume or your standard or go-to volume of developer with normal hair color development. Here's why. It's the standard in the industry. It's not me. It's not Max. It's the standard in the industry. It's the way colors are tested in the laboratory. It's mm -hmm. also the way that processing times are that are recommended, development times, are measured. So if a manufacturer says to you, this level six mixed with 20 volume should give you <coughs> maximum dye development within the within 30 minutes or 35, whatever they measure it to be. That's been measured in the laboratory and it's been and the standard used is 20 volume developer, not 10 volume, not five volume, not 30 volume, 20. So that's one of the reasons because it's the standard in the industry. It's what we use to measure things. <clears throat> Anything you want to yeah. add to that, Max? Yes. I just want to clarify what Dennis is talking about is with permanent hair color. The, mm. the industry standard, normally, when you guys are looking at your swatch book, normally, um, I know a few companies will have split swatches, but most swatches are showing the end color result for a close approximation. Because remember, the swatch books are nylon. They're not hair. Right. Barbie doll. It's Bar Barbie's hair. Uh, but it's, a, it's an approximation of that color result applied with 20 volume on 100% white hair. And in some cases, they'll show one half of the swatch on white hair and one half of the swatch on pigmented hair. But those kind of swatch books are, are pretty few and far between, but they are helpful. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, with a demi-permanent color, those are shown with whatever processing solution or activator yeah. or whatever it's called. Same thing you know, applied to usually white hair. And, right. and the reason they do that is to, to give you guys a, a guide so that you can flip through this and go, okay, this is what I'm going to get applied to this. So, you know, no one just made it up. They, it's been tested. Many, many heads have been done with these formulas. And that's why they are, you know, manufacturers recommended guidelines right right so we are talking about permanent color i i'm sorry i those of you that are thinking demi i'm talking about permanent color we'll get the demi in just a little bit <laughs> so, 
hopefully you, you kind of understand it's about available oxygen to give you maximum dye development. You can develop dye intermediates without the presence of oxygen release. I mean, you cannot develop them in an accelerated space of time. So mm -hmm. that is why 20 volume is the standard. So, so now someone says, well, what happens if I use 30 volume with my color formula or 40 volume with my color formula? Do I still get dye development? You do, you do, mm -hmm. you absolutely do. You get the preparation. So it breaks down the melanin in the hair. So it's making a space for the artificial dye intermediate. You get delivery because that's what peroxide does. It carries in the dye intermediate between the cuticle layers through the mm -hmm. cell membrane complex until they migrate to the cortex where they now bind together precursors, couplers, and modifiers. Precursors, couplers, and modifiers and they bond together, they bond with the structure of the hair and they create a color molecule. That's where color molecules are created. They are created in the hair. They are not created, there are no color molecules in the tube. So- and Can we just also, sorry. <laughs> can we also just talk about, there, there's a whole point of in the, de in the development process too, the there's a certain size when these precursors couplers and modifiers come together they don't just come together like legos but they they come together and they grow into a bigger right mo finished molecule which is supposed to get trapped in the hair and again with permanent color 20 volume is the industry standard so that you develop these dyes not only to the right color but also to the right size. Yes. So if you already if you use permanent hair color with a 10 volume let's say you'll get development will you get full development? No. no. Will you get it to the full size it's supposed to be developed to? No. So if, if something's meant to be this big to be trapped in the hair, but it only develops to be this big in the hair, what do we think is going to happen? Bye-bye. Exactly. It, I'm out of and, here. And, and it's also, uh, there, the other point is the stability of that color molecule. Right. You know, the, these things are made from multiple chemicals that are coming together and forming a new chemical structure. If they are not developed, it's like taking a cake out of the oven too soon. Mm -hmm. What, it, it may look great when you pull it out of the oven, but when you cut into it, you know, you don't know what the inside of that cake is gonna be like. So yeah. these are things to keep in mind, again, if it's working for you and you're getting good results, great. We're not here to poo-poo you. We're just here to tell you all of the facts. And this right. is something throughout our industry that has been tested. You know, manufacturers, they're smart. You know, they want to sell color. So they tell you what they recommend. So if they say maximum, you know, gray coverage, 35 to 45 minutes, they mean it. That's right. It's been tested. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not something somebody thought, oh, that's a great idea. Let's do it this long. Yeah. They're 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 trying to take the guesswork out for you guys. Exactly. Exactly. So when you increase the, the percentage, the volume, you get you get the preparation, you get the delivery, you get the development of dye. But there's something else that happens when we mix peroxide and color together, permanent hair color, okay? So some, for some reason, we have this mental picture in our head that this is all a synchronized process. I mean, that's why we have these belief systems that there's so many minutes of lift and so many minutes of deposit, which is 
absolutely not true. Uh, I'll refer you to one of our big boards on my IG page where we process that. We, you know, we, we maximize, we showed the process from 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And you saw within the first 10 minutes that we were getting deposits. So there is no such thing as a deposit lift and deposit cycle. But it's also not synchronized. It is chaos. So, so mm-hmm. let's think again. What happens when I mix an alkaline with an acid? Okay, I mix color with peroxide. The immediate reaction is that peroxide starts to break down. It manifests that breaking down by expelling oxygen. So it's literally an explosion. It is chaos. Mm -hmm. And during that chaos, hopefully, in our minds, hopefully, we will get a visual development of a dye molecule. We will get fracturing of the structure of the hair Mm -hmm. and we will get delivery that's all within that in that chaos that's occurring not only on the hair but in your bowl so the minute you mix peroxide with hair color they start act working peroxide has no brain yeah it it doesn't it doesn't know it doesn't know if it's on the hair it doesn't know if it's in your eye it doesn't know if it's on your shoe you know so if you if you're doing a highlight and you just need to put a few low lights in, you know, and you get everything in your bowl, but you don't mix it up or, or you do mix it up right at the beginning, but you wait 40 minutes before you put that first low light in, you know, and the, and the maximum processing time is 45 minutes. You're, you know, you're going to get staining of that hair shaft at best. Right. Right. So these are all yeah. all things to keep in mind. Because you know? <coughs> yes. the, the party is happening yeah. in the bowl. Peroxide the doesn't even two hit. It, it doesn't even it's gonna do its thing even when it's on your finger. When you get peroxide and bleach on your finger, what's it do? Peroxide is a decomposing compound. And so you have put it on your finger, your skin, which is made up of protein. And so what's it doing? It's literally turning your finger white because it's degrading your skin. It's degrading your protein. So in all of that chaos, sort of like the spinning cups at Disneyland, we hope to achieve a color result. But there's a side effect. We call it degrading. So peroxide and all the good things that it does, the first three, the fourth thing it does is it degrades. It degrades dye intermediates. It degrades a cuticle in the hair. How does it degrade dye intermediates? Well, when you mix it in your bowl, and if you are applying color, you'll see the product in your bowl starts to change. It starts to get deeper or darker. Why is that? Because peroxide is developing those dyes. And remember what Max said. As those dyes develop, they get bigger until... If I try to take that same product and I've spent a long time in my application and I apply it to the hair and it's already oxidized, the chances of it getting all the way into the cortex of the hair is is pretty much impossible. So they're not even developing in the cortex. They're they're too fat. They get stuck in the cuticle Mm -hmm. layers. So, and there are dye intermediates that will never actually be able to connect because peroxide is degrading those dye intermediates before they ever get to the head of hair. So all this chaos is occurring. In addition to that, peroxide is punching holes in the cuticle. It is the most damaging part of the color process. I know, everybody goes, ammonia, it's really bad, it's really bad. You know, Mm -hmm. ammonia is an alkaline. Okay, but peroxide will literally eat away anything. It does not care. It does not know the difference. It It, has no brain. It's acid, which still means it's corrosive. It is corrosive to the protein structure of the hair. Absolutely. You know, there's there's always a little bit of bad 
to something good. Right. So it's, I mean, if you think about it, if you've ever had, if you've ever cut your hand when you were a little child or your, your children have cut their hand and you put peroxide to clean the wound, why does it clean the wound? Because the minute, because your blood is alkaline. The minute I add an acid to that alkaline source, peroxide begins to break down even in the wound. But what does it do? It creates that bubbling and flushing process. Oxidation. Yes, it's going to clean out the wound. That's the reason they use peroxide to clean wounds because they know that's what it will do. So <clears throat> understanding that if I increase the volume of peroxide or percentage of peroxide, I increase the amount of degrading that occurs to everything. And, and here's a test that you can do. First of all, you need to go to amazon.com and order yourself these white cotton pads. Then you need to take these cotton pads, take one tube of color you choose i recommend a level five you choose and mix it with 10 volume 20 volume 30 volume and 40 volume and paint it on the cotton pads and then just walk away now when you when you come back to watch it you will see that oh my god it looks like the 40 volume is getting darker than the 10 volume why is that because 40 volume has a higher percentage of oxygen more oxygen to release. So it's going to start to develop those dyes immediately. Remember, this is on a cotton pad. It's not even in the hair. And so as you're doing that, all we're looking at now is the delivery and the development of the dyes. That's all we're looking at, not what happens to the hair. So as you're watching it, the 40 volume looks darker than the 10 volume. Leave it. Come back the next day and look at it. You will find the 40 volume is lighter the 30 volume, a little bit darker than 40. 10 will be deeper looking than the 40 volume. Why? Because the 40 volume developed and degraded the dyes quickly, prematurely, and you lost development of those dyes. If I don't have a right. precursor and a coupler to connect with a modifier, if you will, I have no color. Because if those things are not connected, together there is no color visually you see nothing that is what hair color is it doesn't happen until all of those dye intermediates are connected together that's an important thing for you to try to remember so higher volumes do not make your color lighter people do this all the time max they say mm -hmm. i want my level seven to be lighter that's the term they use yeah. So they mix it with 30 or 40 volume and it doesn't get lighter, but it certainly gets brighter. I, and if, I, if I, that, I, just, I was that hairdresser. Yeah. And it, in that cotton pad test, if you think it's doing degrading the dyes, you can see that visually. What do you think would happen if you put it on the hair? Not only would the dyes be degraded, but guess what? It would, ex it would break down more of the hair structure than required. So the hair would be contributing extreme warmth, much more extreme than if I were to use it with the standard in the industry. Mm -hmm. Ta-da. <sighs> Come to zero. Come to zero. <laughs> Another way. And it, there's a, there's a really old kind of visual, but I think it's really relevant. So if you were to picture four empty drinking water glasses and one has one Alka-Seltzer in it, another mm. has two, one has three, one has four, and you were to pour water, in, the same amount of water into them, if the one with one Alka-Seltzer is 10 volume, it's gonna create a certain amount of bubbles. Effervescence. Exactly. The second one's got <laughs> okay. two alka seltzers. It's right. creating dub double the amount of bubbles. The one representing 30 volume with three alka seltzers, it's creating triple amount of bubbles and you know quadruple for 40. That's the same. The way you want to look at this is chemical action. 
right? This right. activity is going on, you know? So it, it's more of, you're creating more chemical activity in the hair, the higher the amount of developer you're using. But do you really need that to get the end result that you're going for? And that's exactly. kind of, that's, that's the point that we're trying to make because the more chemical activity you're throwing into the equation, you're also going to get a little blowback from, meaning, right. you know, if a color is designed to work with 20 volume and you're mixing it with 40 volume, there's definitely gonna be, you know, more lightening of the natural melanin in the hair and also more degrading of your overall final deposit. So not to not to not to even consider the degrading of the cuticle. <laughs> right. The degrading of the hair. Yeah. You know? In general. So so you're you're creating, you know, un, unnecessary, you know, breakage of disulfide bonds, unnecessary, you know, holes poked into the cuticle, a lot of times unnecessary lift and and you're not getting the proper de deposit right. and then all of a sudden it becomes you know that didn't work that product doesn't work yeah but it absolutely it does work if you actually follow the manufacturer's recommended guidelines which is why the manufacturer recommends them so so dennis can we kind of flip this let's, this let's pass by this yeah. And let's talk about demi permanent yes. colors and toners. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now you should be able to figure what we're going to figure out what we're going to say. I mean, okay, so the first, I'll address toners, you address demi permanent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why do I mix a toner with lower volumes of developers? Well, here's why. <laughs> a toner that you're using, usually the word toner, toner is not a product, but we identify that word as a product, is usually, um, it's usually measured in lighter shades, eights, nines, and tens, we consider toners. Most people consider 10 the only place to tone hair. But in any case, <clears throat> when you get to colors that are that light, there is less pigment in those colors. Mm -hmm. So having less pigment changes the amount of time required for maximum dye development. If I only have, you know, 27 pigments, that I'm, I'm trying to be facetious here. Instead of having 127 pigments, I can develop those dye intermediates in a shorter window of time. Therefore, I don't need a, a, lar a higher strength developer. I can get away with using something in the 3% 10 volume or 1.5% 5 volume, and I will get or achieve maximum dye development in the recommended amount of time, which is not one and a half minutes at the shampoo bowl or 45 seconds at the shampoo bowl, it is, there is a window of time that requires for those dyes to develop. It is shorter in many cases than permanent hair color, but nevertheless, there is amount of time <coughs> that's required for maximum dye development. So that's why we use lower volumes of developer when we're toning the hair and we don't, we're not required to, we're not required to use higher volumes of developer or higher percentages when we're working with lighter shades. I'm talking about toning now. I'm not talking about high lift. Okay. High right. lift was back when we were talking about permanent hair color. Okay. So Max, why don't you and talk about de demi-permanent colors? So basically same thing applies to demi. Mm -hmm. Demi in any demi permanent line from levels one to 10, there is a fixed amount of alkalinity in those. And it's the same 
from levels one to 10, as opposed to in permanent color, the higher the level, the more alkalinity, the less amount of deposit. Whereas with demi-permanent color, or as some companies like to say, no lift color, there's just enough alkalinity there to, as we say, open the door, meaning get the cuticle to swell open, get the dyes inside, develop them, and right. get them to do their job. So these are typically a bit lower alkalinity than permanent hair color. But, you know, the, the same thing applies if you mix higher developers than are recommended, the same thing is happening. You are creating unnecessary chemical activity in your bowl, in the hair, mm -hmm. you are creating extra damage. You are creating possible extra lift that you can visually see. Because a lot right. of times, the, the fracturing of the natural pigment with a demi-permanent color, you don't see, which is why they call it no lift color. But guess what, you guys, if oxygen's being released, that pigment in the hair is being fractured. You may not be able to see it with your naked eye, but right. I can assure you, and so can this guy, that it's happening. Yeah, so if absolutely. you're taking something that's supposed to be mixed with five volume only, and you're mixing it with 20, you are basically just creating a lot of unnecessary activity in the process. Right. And at the end of the day, you're going to not have a, a, a result that's going to last very long. And right. you, you have possibly created too much lift. And if you, you've ever done this, and the clients come back and, and said either, you know, you know, my, my color faded, my hair is orange. This is why. Absolutely. Max, you're absolutely on point there. And the thing is, is when they increase that volume uh, and not recommended, they, mm -hmm. they start going outside the box. They're also breaking down some of those dye intermediates that are in that very color because of the increased right. act activity. And so you're not really getting a full effect of the deposit that is possible in that shade of color. Now, I know belief systems are very strong and I know that we have great imaginations, but when I watch someone apply one of those demi-permanent products to a lightened head of hair, and <clears throat> process it with 13 volume instead of five volume. And then talk about, and then under process it in time, they only process it for five minutes. I'm saying that that's crazy because that color is not going to last, but I will guarantee you people will swear that that color lasts all the way till they come back. Six weeks later, it lasts for six. No, it doesn't. No color lasts for six weeks. Nobody's color does. Unless they put you in a hermetically sealed bag and <laughs> keep you there for six weeks. So <clears throat> hopefully you, have un you, you kind of get a grasp for the difference between peroxide that we use with permanent hair colors and developers or peroxides. I mean, that's really what it is. They call it activating mm -hmm. solution. It's really a, it's a developer. It's a peroxide. It releases oxygen. They all have pretty names. You know, um, I think, what is it? The Clairol Nice and Easy. They don't use peroxide. They use white essence activating solution. Mm -hmm. You know, so it sounds pretty. We're into pretty terms. But in reality, you're using an acid and you're using an alkali. Max, I think maybe we should just spend a minute a minute on high lifts because oh yeah not, a lot it, of people don't don't use high lifts right now that so we have generations who they came into the industry after high lifts had people have moved away from high lifts and and so when you talk about high lifts a lot of the young hairdressers don't know what don't know what that is you know mm -hmm. and i think you need to understand that 
high lifts are really not a hair color. They don't really fit into the hair color category. And yet they don't also, they also don't really fit into the bleach that you're familiar with that category. They're kind of like in their own place. I, I have mm -hmm. always said that they are, they are more like an oil bleach with a little pigment added. So they're really aggressive, as aggressive as an oil bleach would be. So they're stronger than hair color. <clears throat> the, the reason that, that I want to address these is because we talked about maximum dye development. So we know in every shade of color that every manufacturer makes, they have a processing time that they believe is the uh, optimum time to give you maximum development of all your dyes. Sometimes <clears throat> we get excited when we're trying to lighten hair and we're trying to make it as light as we possibly can in one process. So we, and we may not want to use powdered lightener. We choose to use a high lifting hair color super lifters or whatever their names are. Mm. And we don't realize that those are really another form of a bleach in any case. And they have very little pigment in them, very little, but they're highly alkaline. Okay, that means that they have a higher ratio of fixed alkali than any of the, of, of the other colors in your line. So because we try to do things that are really not always achievable, you know, you have a client who comes in and says she has, let's say she has light brown hair. She's between light brown and dark blonde. So it's real hard when you're trying to measure it. What is she? And she says, I want to be, and she brings you a picture from Instagram. I want to be this extremely light platinum blonde. And so you go to your mixing area and you grab your ash based high lift tent because you don't want to use bleach. You grab your ash based high lift tent you apply that to that client's hair and the instructions may say 45 to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we say, well, if 45 and 50 minutes will achieve what the manufacturer recommends, I'm going to leave it for 60 minutes. And, and here's the thing you need to always remember in all hair colors, with the exception of demi-permanent colors, okay, because demi-permanents have a fixed alkali, same ratio throughout every level. <clears throat> but in permanent hair color, there is a maximum dye development moment. And there is also an oxidation process. And here's the rule, okay? Oxidation will always extend beyond maximum dye development. So that means in every color that you use, at the end of your processing time, recommended maximum dye development, it may be 35 minutes, and you say, okay, 35 minutes, this is the best development I can get. If you extend it in a normal hair color, a normal chain of hair color, <clears throat> you will get a little bit more development of dye. Um, so a lot of times manufacturers recommend that if your resistant gray hair is not covering, they recommend you extend the processing time another 15 minutes. But at that maximum dye development moment, if my color is not responding and I'm using a, a regular shade of hair color, I can then add whatever is missing. Let's say it's not red enough. I can add red to it and extend my processing time. There's still enough oxidation in that mixture to develop the dyes that I'm adding into the mixture. So I'm literally changing the color during the process by mm -hmm. adding those new dye intermediates into the mixture. With high lift tents, that's not the case because <clears throat> high lift tents only have maybe a small amount of pigment in them. And so if you extend the processing time from 45 minutes to 60 minutes, High lift tents, because oxidation extends beyond maximum dye development, they will literally cannibalize themselves. And because, again, peroxide is part of the oxidation process, it will begin to degrade the very dyes that you develop in the hair. Mm -hmm. You see this happen more often than not when people are doing foil highlights. They put a high lift tent in the foil, and rather than processing it at room temperature, they put it under the hairdresser's microwave oven, the hairdryer, 
And Ooh. even though they used used an ash base color when they open up the foil, it's still yellow. And they go, what's wrong? What's wrong was it really degraded the pigment, the very pigment that it had to give you some degree of refinement. Max, yeah, was that? You, over, you, you overstepped the, the threshold, basically. Yes, exactly. There was a, there was a point there where probably everything was hunky-dory in that foil, but because that color stayed on the hair longer than is recommended, it, it, it kept going. Right, right, absolutely. And that, wow. is, that, that is a big thing with high lift color as opposed to traditional levels one through 10. Right, right. Well, my friend, I think we've covered this subject pretty thoroughly. What do you think? Uh, I agree. I think this was a great episode. Um, looking forward to hearing your guys' comments and feedback on it. Yeah. So, so please comment below. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You. Absolutely. And we uh, invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not yet a subscriber. We also invite you to visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Um, so you can visit that website. You can also, you know, stay in contact or follow Max and I. We'd love to have you join our circle on Instagram. You can find mm -hmm. Max at Max M. Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And if you uh, have challenges, because... We know that some people don't know how to clear their cookies <laughs> or clear their cash on their mobile device when they're trying to access our website. And because our um, educational page is, 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 is at a different location, uh, when you try to click on education, the wheel just keeps spinning. If you have issues with that, write on in Instagram on my page at Real Captain Colored. Um, if you click on the link in my bio, it will take you directly to our educational page where you will find some really interesting programs such mm -hmm. as Hair Color School. We are so excited about that. It starts October the 3rd. Uh, it is the fall session of Hair Color School. It is four weeks of training and education um, <clears throat> online. We, we spend four times with you during the month of October. And then we also have you on an exclusive messaging group where you're in contact with either Max or myself or both of us to mm -hmm. help give you some coaching, some guidance, some feedback during and between week, between class sessions. Uh, there's also homework that we ask you to complete. It's really for your benefit. It's not for ours. And we really are excited. And we think that that will allow us to be kind of immersed for 30 days. Uh, with the same group of individuals and we keep the class small and the reason we do that is so that everyone gets individual educated individual attention and uh, we think we're really going to uh, help some people uh, develop their skills and develop more confidence we also want to uh, share with you that on september 26th and 27th we've been requested to do a program on facilitation and this is really if you're a trainer, if you're an educator, if you're wanting to be an educator, if you're a manager of a salon and you're responsible for training new employees, if you're a salon owner and uh, you want to train your staff, uh, if, you're in, if you're a beauty school instructor and you want to get some information on how to facilitate uh, your educational programs uh, a little bit more successfully, we invite you to sign up for uh, Teaching for Transfer. Uh, that's September 26th and 27th. It is a two-day program. It's an introduction into facilitation, uh, how to put together a class format, uh, how to interact with your learners, understanding all the learner types that, that we have. I believe it's important as a trainer to understand that people have their own learning style. And the more you know about that, it helps you to be able to get that message to transfer. We are working mm -hmm. with general statistics. We know that <clears throat> when you do any kind of a program, 20% of the people that are attending your program will not connect with you for a myriad of reasons. So we want to help you reduce that percentage of people, uh, build a better connection with folks, and, um, and be able to deliver the content 
in the appropriate context. Those are the two most key things that we focus on in this program, content versus context. We'll explain more if you uh, join us in that class. That is also up on our website as well. So, Max, this one's been fun, buddy. Yeah, yeah, this oh, was awesome. Oh, oh dude, dude, our, our ride is here. Our ride is here. So I listen. Guess I'll be. <laughs> It's meet you in the brother. clearing. Yes, right. meet you in the clearing, man. Thank you, everybody, for watching and hanging with us today. And as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you? I'm out, too. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye you everybody. so much. Bye, everybody. Take See you care. Bye-bye.